blessed be. I am Hazel, and this is my familiar. Her name is Midnight. Welcome to our creepy abode. Midnight, and I would like to show you around our creepy cottage and discuss a few things about being a witch. If that resonates with you... We are brewing up a little tea, so sit right back and relax your weary bones. The term, which gets thrown around in everyday life, soaked with a long history of negative connotation, which derives from the old English noun, wicca meaning a male witch, and wise meaning a female witch or sorceress. However, this negative stigma has recently been viewed as outdated and tired. So, what does it mean to be a witch? Witches today can be defined in three ways. Someone who actively practices magical rituals or spells. Someone who has a spiritual connection, such as a psychic medium or a tarot reader. Or someone who worships the pagan gods. The reality of what it means to be a witch today carries many traditions of the pagan religion. Something which was previously thought to be tied to the devil or satanic rituals. Modern day witchcraft often includes the lighting of candles, meditation, yoga, incense, the smudging of sage, crystals, dream analysis, and other rituals connected to pagan roots. However, witchcraft is simply about using the power of the universe and the mind to attract wants and desires. It's about being in tune with Earth's natural resources and using them to mystically quench a spiritual thirst. Spotting a witch today compared to the 1600s is an entirely different puzzle. Nowadays, it's rather easy to determine who's a witch because they are generally proud of their mystical practice. We now know you can't simply label someone a witch based on their physical appearance or outspokenness. But in the late 1500s to mid-1600s in Eastern Europe and early colonial America, witches were named purely based on societal suspicion. For example, if a woman was outspoken, she was a witch. If she owned land or had a great deal of assets, she was a witch. If a woman was widowed or a spinster, she was considered out of the ordinary. Therefore, she was deemed a witch. After the label which was plastered on a woman in the community, there were many ways to theoretically prove her connection to the feared and mysterious craft. One of these tests included the bizarre witch cake. A rye flour cake baked with the urine of the accused, which was then fed to a local dog that the community observed to determine if it showed the same behaviors as the witch. People believed the urine would transmit satanic juices to the dog because of its supposed association with the devil. There were many other devised strategies to determine the presence of a witch in the community including weighing the accused against a stack of Bibles, asking them to recite the Lord's Prayer, counting the number of pets they had, counting the number of marriages they had, asking them if they had dreams that included Native Americans or their culture, observing if they talked to themselves. These tests and many others determined a community member's right to continuing living. 
The accused was also searched for the physical mark of a witch, including birthmarks, scars, or extra nipples. These mysterious physical marks, which we now discern as common biological features, were considered signs of the devil's presence. The accused were pricked with knives on these marks. If the mark did not bleed, they were deemed a witch. Witchcraft is not as highly feared as it once was. There are no widespread witch hunts or constant fear associated with the neighborhood spinsters and widows. The destigmatization of witches is seen more and more in our everyday lives as popular stores sell tarot cards and crystals. While smudging with sage and owning a spell book is a trending lifestyle and is visible all over the internet. While this destigmatization of witches may seem trendy on the surface, as it's popularly marketed, the spread of witch awareness is closely related to a greater cause, the women's empowerment movement rapidly spreading across the world. Today, people recognize the need for a change in energy relating to the female's place in society, but often women are feared for being strong-willed and outspoken. Then, like now, powerful women or those with important titles often face greater challenges than their male counterparts. In the 1600s, they were burned at the stake or stoned to death. Today, they can face belittlement of their accomplishments, their morality questioned, or reputations intentionally tarnished. With that being said, one could argue that witchcraft is a necessary addition to modern society as it illuminates the daily struggles of women on various levels. With that feminist insight in mind, it's vital to remember that witchcraft is not just one single thing across the board. It's certainly not just the performance of spell casting or the donning of crystals. It's an understanding of one's own spirituality. And at this period in time, which is faced with drastically polarizing viewpoints, it is essential to have beliefs that we can mold to our own specific needs. Thank you for joining Midnight and I today in my humble little cottage. Bless Edby and enjoy the rest of your day.